The New York Knicks jumped ahead of schedule in the 2020-21 season, finishing in the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference while Julius Randle broke out, winning MVP and making an All-NBA team. But they fell down to earth last season, finishing in the 11 seed, with mainly the same team. So what changed and what's next moving forward for the New York Knicks? Julius Randle did not return to the All-NBA level he displayed in the 2020-21 season, and in turn was one of the biggest reasons for the Knicks' step backwards this season. Randle's efficiency dropped significantly, specifically from three-point range where he went from being a very good three-point shooter to a fairly poor one. His defense has also had much more lapses and negative moments than his defense in the 2020-21 season, which resulted in a big step back for Randle's defense as well as the Knicks' defense. RJ Barrett took another great step forward in his third season in the NBA, averaging 20 points per game on the year. At still only 22 by the time next season rolls around, he is certainly a key part of the Knicks' future and has a great future in the league. Evan Fournier had a disappointing first season in New York, being very streaky and having some of the worst play of the last few years of his career after getting a significant payday in free agency. Derrick Rose continued to be a valuable backup point guard, but unfortunately only played in 26 games, something that significantly hurt the Knicks offense as he was someone they would often rely on, specifically down the stretch of games. Nerlens Noel is another player who struggled with injuries, playing only 25 games, and his efficiency was down on the year as well. He can still provide some rim protection and rebounding assuming he stays healthy, but his health is a concern and his offensive production is very limited. Alex Burks became the starting point guard for a large portion of the season, and although he played fine and continued to be a good three-point shooter, it was clear that Alex Burks should not be relied on as an every-night starter in the NBA, especially not as a point guard. Kemba Walker had a 50-point performance and was dropped from the rotation in what was a very hot and cold season where Kemba averaged the least points of his career and played the least games he has ever played in a season. Taj Gibson continues to be a Tom Thibodeau man and continues to be a good veteran presence, and although in limited volume, he improved his three-point shooting this season. We'll be topping at a much improved second season in the league, showing over the last couple of weeks of the season how impactful he can be, assuming he can continue that against more teams that are playing their full lineups and not just tanking next season. He plays with great energy and has great athleticism, is a very good rebounder, and provides some value as a spacer. Emmanuel quickly had a fine second season in the league, but it honestly wasn't overly impressive, especially after the very good rookie season he had. He did not take significant steps forward, but that's hopefully something we can still see from him moving forward as it is still very young in Emmanuel Quickly's career. Mitchell Robinson played 72 games this year, managing to stay healthy. That's one of the biggest feats for Mitchell Robinson, and he did so while being one of the most efficient big men in the league, while being a very good rim protector, and while continuing to foul less again compared to the season previous. Cam Reddish started last year very well with the Hawks, very quickly got very cold, and never really got much of an opportunity with the Knicks due to Tom Thibodeau not really being interested in acquiring Cam Reddish. But hopefully, we will get to see something from him next season in terms of consistent minutes and production. And Miles McBride, Quentin Grimes, and Jericho Sims all continue to be young depth pieces with some upside moving forward. So heading into the 2022 offseason, what is next for the Knicks? And what decisions can they make with their assets and this roster? As far as I'm concerned, the Knicks have two directions that they could go this summer. Commit to this group and try to form as competitive a roster as possible, however good or bad that is. Or, build around RJ Barrett and build towards the future. But before we get into that discussion, let's briefly discuss the only significant free agent for the next this offseason, Mitchell Robinson. Mitch Robinson will be an unrestricted free agent in the summer, and with several teams across the league needing starting quality centers, many teams will likely be showing interest in the young center that the Knicks will be looking to hold on to. Losing him would certainly hurt the Knicks' prospects moving forward, as Mitch Robinson is replaceable, but not necessarily easily replaceable in this offseason with a very small center free agency pool. That would leave only Nerlens Noel on the roster as truly NBA-ready centers, someone who is not much of an offensive threat, and is certainly someone that has struggled with injuries in the past, not necessarily someone you want to be playing heavy minutes, which he would have to do with Mitchell Robinson out of town. 
the Knicks will be looking to retain him quite heavily. It's possible he leaves. It is fully dependent on how much other teams are willing to offer him. But the Knicks will do everything they can within reason to make sure Mitchell Robinson is a New York Knick again next season. But let's talk about the big picture. The Knicks have two options, one of which I think is more likely, knowing the history and the direction of the Knicks, and the other one I think is better for sustained long-term success that I would prefer. But let's start with the more likely option. This option would see the Knicks make all moves necessary to be a playoff team and be as successful as possible for next season. This option would likely see the Knicks do everything they can to retain Mitch Robinson. This sees the Knicks look to move RJ in a possible star trade, whether that be for Donovan Mitchell, whether that be a sign and trade for Zach Levine, or any others. This option could still see a Julius Randle trade as well if they find a trade that somehow improves the roster, given the fact that he obviously had a poor year last year and doesn't seem to be anywhere near a fan favorite in New York right now, but ultimately is likely to stay given they want as competitive a roster as possible, and you're probably not improving the roster immediately with a Julius Randle trade. You would be sure to lose at least one of RJ Barrett or Julius Randle, and in any trade, alongside multiple role players such as Evan Fournier, Kemba Walker, Ernerlands, Noel, and future draft capital to make such a star trade. So the team would improve in the short term. Certainly, you would be acquiring a star level player in such a scenario. But would they be a title contender? As far as I'm concerned, not even close. Unless someone better than Donovan Mitchell becomes available, then otherwise, I don't see it. Donovan Mitchell is very good. Don't get it wrong. He's very good. He's a very good player. But Donovan Mitchell is not good enough to be the number one option on a championship contending level team unless he has a player pretty much as good as him alongside him. He needs to be a 1A alongside a 1B. Donovan Mitchell, with your next best player being Julius Randle or RJ Barrett, is not going to win you a title. Period. So they would be better. They would be a playoff team. It would be a very competitive roster. But they would be giving up some value long term. They would be giving up the option of having sustainable success long term with continuing young assets and draft picks for not even being a title contender. So with that information in mind, what is my preferred option? Now, let me be clear. Not everything in this system revolves around RJ Barrett becoming some superstar, but in the short term, it revolves around letting RJ Barrett be the focal point of the Knicks while adding more young talent around him. This plan does not see the Knicks look to acquire a star via trade, but instead it focuses on developing young players, acquiring more young talent over the next few years, and developing sustainable success in New York. So what does this option truly entail? Well, a Julius Randle trade would be heavily explored, and given the tensions at the end of the year, he would likely be traded if a decent return of picks or young players could be acquired. Tom Thibodeau would ideally be fired as head coach, as that would be most logical in this situation, as Thibodeau is not exactly a coach for a young team focusing on player development. Kemba Walker, Nerlens Noel, Alex Burks, and Derrick Rose all only have one more year guaranteed on their contract, and could be moved for picks before the 2023 trade deadline as expiring contracts, adding more assets to the Knicks moving forward. The next couple of years would be a time to add a few more assets and work towards building a regular playoff team in the East, with the Knicks already having players such as RJ Barrett, Obi Toppin, Mitchell Robinson, Emmanuel Quickly, Cam Reddish, Quentin Grimes, Miles McBride, and Jericho Sims. With the Knicks having three first round picks over the next two years, one of which will be a lottery pick this year and one of which would be a lottery pick next year if they followed through on this plan, the Knicks would be able to add a couple of more solid young pieces while adding more value that they could use for a potential star trade down the line when they actually have a shot at acquiring a player that makes them a true title contender. At the end of the day, the Knicks historically will take the option of being as competitive as they can be right now and opt to just be a fine to good team and shrinking their window of being a good team by trading away future assets and likely a very good young player in RJ Barrett. 
But be sure to let me know what you think the Knicks should be doing over the next offseason and the next 12 months. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Peace.